Hello there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Most people consider Coruscant to be the most important planet in Star Wars, and a lot of that has to do with not only Coruscant's important role as the political and economic center of the galaxy, it's also known as the most populous planet as well. In 19 BBY, in the last year of the Republic and the first year of the Empire, a census was done for the entire planet. And it was found that there were around 1 trillion citizens on Coruscant. Keep in mind this is a census of full-time registered citizens who were on the planet legally. It was further estimated by the census that if you count temporary workers, transients, and refugees, the real population is over 3 trillion. And this is more or less accepted as the official number of Coruscant's population, but after just doing some preliminary research, I realized that this number is a complete lie. It, it's nonsense and made up. And the actual population of the planet could be infinitely greater. Today we'll be taking a look at the Coruscant population controversy and we'll talk about why the population is so underreported. This could be because of a variety of different reasons from poor data, uh, sampling issues, to even policy and political bias. We'll also give you our own analysis of what we think the actual population should be. And this number will probably surprise you and make you realize that our planet isn't nearly as overpopulated as you think. So in the United States, according to the Constitution, every 10 years a census takes place where every household is invited to fill out a questionnaire, either through the phone, on the internet, or on a written questionnaire that can be mailed in. And this has been happening since 1790. As a matter of fact, they even counted the amount of slaves in the country at the time, 694,280, about 17.6% of the population. That's some pretty dark history. Now, the reason why the Founding Fathers wanted a census, even back then, in the first decade or so of our country's existence was they wanted to be able to properly govern and allocate resources and more importantly tax their territories properly. Every government needs to understand its population and demographics and so I'm sure Coruscant has also built in a census regime since the founding of the city to make sure that they can understand the population makeup of the planet. Remember Coruscant is a ecumenopolis. It's completely covered in urban sprawl and dirt creek. There's very few natural resources being produced on this planet, so they are heavily dependent on import for basic things like food and clean water. There are a variety of different methods used by the census to figure out how many Americans are. This can involve a lot of direct interviews, you know, phone calls, going door to door and interviewing people, the use of birds to spy on people, normal stuff like that. But at one point in time, you're going to have to uh, basically sample the population, basically take a smaller group that represents the larger demographic or population you want to take a look at and create a hypothesis and upscale those findings. For instance, you could by hand accurately count how many residents live in Mega Block A in Coruscant and then figure out how many Mega Blocks there are in the entire planet to figure out a rough estimate of the entire planet's population. This is a really rough explanation, like I failed statistics in high school, so I don't, I'm not the best person to teach this kind of stuff, but the idea is you can't count every individual one by one. You need a sample, you need to upscale your findings. Now, in the Star Wars galaxy, you have things like droids that can considerably lower the cost of a census, especially the interviewing process. Still, given the scope and size of Coruscant, especially if you start looking at its depths, it almost be impossible to estimate the population without using some type of statistical modeling. Now, historically speaking, certain demographics are going to be pretty hard to count. In the United States, for instance, uh, lower income households might have a problem securing housing and a lot of census information is actually connected to where one lives. The homeless are also relatively hard to count for that reason. Certain demographics also try to avoid the census as much as possible because they don't trust it. In the United States, that's usually minority communities like African Americans, Hispanics, and even more so Asian Americans. This has to do with the fear of census information being used in some way that can negatively affect the individual. For instance, in the 1940s, census information was used to Put Japanese Americans into internment camps. So there, this isn't just paranoia, there is a precedent for this. Given the Empire's destruction of the Republic around 19 BBY and its persecution of political opponents, I wouldn't be surprised if many Republic loyalists tried to actively avoid the census. Uh, the same thing could be said by the Jedi fugitives hiding in the Undercity. I'm sure they didn't want to be counted. And on Coruscant, you're going to have a massive amount of refugees and people fleeing war and conflict, especially after the Clone Wars. I mean, 
Uh, these are going to be individuals seeking aid and shelter, all sorts of kind of things, and a lot of them might be illegal. You're also going to have individuals who might be former separatist war criminals. A lot of these people will not want to be counted by the census. They fear incarceration or being deported, even if that's not a policy. You also have a large criminal element that basically controls the Coruscant underground. They're going to be very mistrustful of the Coruscant government. Now, with sampling and statistical modeling, you should be able to come up with a pretty accurate estimation of what the entire population is. For instance, if you have ship logs and uh, head counts on individuals coming in and out of Coruscant, you have a decent idea of how much of an influx of people came to Coruscant during the conflict and how many have left. Also having hospital records is an important part to figure out what your population growth and decrease is, looking at your um, you know, cemeteries, moratoriums, stuff like that. You could also take a look at water and power usage in different neighborhoods. But still, this is a guessing game. It's not an exact science. So to get an accurate statistical model of a population, you do have to understand the population somewhat, which is a far larger problem on Coruscant because most of the city's population lies in a massive labyrinth below the surface. In most Star Wars shows, we're only shown the surface of the planet, generally the Senate District with its gleaming towers and beautiful architecture and wide open plazas. But securing an apartment like the one Mon Mothma has or the one Padme Amidala stays in is something reserved for either the ultra wealthy or political elite. Most individuals, even in the upper class, are going to have a very difficult time securing a surface level apartment. Imagine every housing issue we have here on Earth, and then expand it to a planet-sized city, which only has so much surface housing that everyone desires. And by everyone, I mean the entire galaxy of hundreds, if not thousands of trillions of people. Not just talking about Coruscant locals. When you have so much demand and so few inventory, uh, the, the competition is going to drive up the price to ridiculous amounts for those few apartments. And on a side note, for all of you guys who are really pissed off about the high housing prices in our country, well, the main solution to all of this is actually just building more housing. And so those scumbag, greedy real estate developers everyone hates are kind of also the solution here. I know a lot of people are pointing fingers towards private equity for buying up single family homes and also those real estate gurus who tell people to, you know, incur heavy amounts of debt to buy 10 units and rent them out. These guys are definitely all scumbags and what they're doing isn't great, but they also incur a lot of risk by buying that many properties. And they're not the only ones driving housing prices up. It's also those people who are protesting the development of new high-rise apartments, apartment complexes. We basically need more buildings everywhere. Even if it is luxury condominiums, we need more of it all. Anyway, because of a lack of surface housing, this is why most middle-class families like Cyril Karn's family live several stories below the surface of Coruscant. And the thing is, you know, Cyril's family's residence is still considered pretty nice, all things considered. I mean, the kid gets like two minutes of sunlight every day from his bedroom window, which probably would be highlighted in the Zillow listing for this unit if they ever try to sell. Probably add like 5% value to the overall price of the unit. Now in total, there are 5,127 levels in the underworld. And while certain levels were reserved, like level 127, which is where the planet's central power distribution grid was placed, most of these levels did have living beings inhabiting them. Not all of them were sentient, of course, but there are definitely trillions of different individuals living down in the darkness. It's rumored that some of these more isolated groups have never even seen the surface or understand that there's something called sunlight, you know? It's a pretty bizarre world. And some of the most famous levels are quite low underground, like 1313, for instance. Which makes me think that a good percentage of these levels, if they're not completely contaminated or, you know, just uh, filled with dangerous animals, are going to be inhabited. What's also clear is that while the Coruscant Security Force has the surface and the first few hundred levels beneath it under the watchful eye of its robotic droid force, once you start going deeper, you'll be lucky to find any Coruscant Security Force or even the Underworld Police. And honestly, the Underworld Police were as corrupt as the gangs who actually ran the various levels. And who knows what lies beneath that? I mean, if you take a look at the Ecumenopolis Terrace, at the lowest levels, it's basically overrun by f***ing rat ghouls. So excuse me for calling shenanigans on Coruscant's uh, so-called uh, census numbers, uh, three trillion is just not enough.
So what is the actual population of Coruscant? Well, first, let's just debunk the entire one or three trillion population number. Coruscant is supposed to be a Eusemonopolis, with, I'm going to guess, at least five miles of underground levels that are inhabited. Even if you do have swaths of the planet, like the works area, that are unpopulated or have lower population, the majority of the planet is still going to be teeming with life. We're talking about trillions upon trillions of beings. So how do we know this? Well, first, we need to find out the surface area of Coruscant. We have the diameter of the planet, which is around 12,240 kilometers. That's only a few hundred kilometers less than Earth, which has a surface area of around 510 million square kilometers. Let's just call it a half a million kilometers to make it easy. And then let's say that, you know, 25% of Coruscant's surface is uninhabitable. That gives us a total habitable surface area for Coruscant of 375 million kilometers square. Divide the population uh, 3 trillion by the surface area and you get about 8,000 people per square kilometer. Here's a list of cities in America by population density. And as you can see, if Coruscant's numbers are true, that would place its population density in between two towns in New Jersey I'm actually uh, quite familiar with and grew up around, Irvington and Jersey City. And these are not the most densely populated cities, even in New Jersey. I mean, these are towns with neighborhoods that have single family homes, something you rarely see in metropolitan areas in like Asia or Europe. And while there are some apartment blocks in these New Jersey cities, they're either usually very small, and if they are big, they're spaced out and have room around them for parking. This is in Manhattan, where the buildings are just on top of each other. Heck, it's not even Hoboken, which has a population of 18,000 people per square kilometer. Hoboken represents your typical European city with, you know, five to six story high apartment buildings crammed side by side on the streets. And if you take a look at the most densely populated city in the world, Manila, it actually has around 43,065 people per square kilometer. And even then, you know, this is a really massive city with all sorts of different type of neighborhoods. You have areas like Makati City, which might look a little more like Coruscant, but then you also have Happy Land, which probably looks more like the slums in Nor Shaddaa. Sorry, Manila, I love you guys. But let's say Coruscant has that same kind of density as Manila does, 43,000 people per square kilometer. Then we're talking about a total population of 16 trillion 125 billion people on the planet. That is significantly higher than the official numbers. But then again, even Manila's population density is only at the ground level and doesn't truly encompass the depths of a 5,000 level city. And so that estimate of 16 trillion people is probably only good for the surface of Coruscant, which is mind-blowing. So what about all the layers underneath? Well, let's take a look at one of Earth's densest areas ever. Well, we have to go all the way back to 1993 to one of my favorite cities, Hong Kong. Back then, they had an extremely high density block of apartments known as the Kulon Walled City. This was some sci-fi, dystopia, cyberpunk, Judge Dredd megablock kind of stuff. This was a city inside of a group of buildings with its own economy, with its own retail and services. There are tons of families living on top of each other and of course, a lot of gang activity. The entire area was controlled by the triads. This is basically the Coruscant underground, except maybe it's only, you know, a dozen or so floors high. It was estimated that about 50,000 people lived in an area smaller than 0.026 kilometers square, which means that there was a population density of 1.9 million people per square kilometer in this walled city. I really wish I could have visited this building before they tore it down, but yeah, I think this is a lot closer to what Coruscant's density is. If all of Coruscant has the same population density as Coulomb's walled city, that would mean the entire planet would have a population of over 712 trillion 500 billion people. I actually wouldn't be surprised if Coruscant's real population was even more than that, anywhere from 10 times to 100 times more. So we're talking about a real population of maybe a thousand trillion or a quadrillion or tens of quadrillions. For the Coruscant authorities to truly understand how many people live in the Undercity though, they have to first figure out which parts of the Undercity are actually habitable, which is not an easy thing to do at all. So although we don't know what exactly Coruscant's exact population is, it's very clear that the estimate of 1 trillion to 3 trillion is just nonsense. So the question is, why underreport your population so much? Well, I assume it has something to do with the Imperial era. I'm going to guess that there are political reasons for this. So the empire is an authoritarian fascist states, and usually what these fascist states like to do is to divide up the population and pit them against each other. You create a loyal base that fits your image of what the perfect Imperial should be, 
uh, generally human, someone who pays taxes and is registered with the chain codes. Remember the first year of the empire, that was Vice Admiral Rampart's huge accomplishment, registering every individual in the empire with an ID number. Well, having an ID number isn't generally a bad idea for society. The empire clearly wanted to have an identification system to be able to better control its population. And if you choose to be outside of the system, then the empire doesn't really want to count you at all. They much rather shove you beneath the rug or imprison you or put you in a work camp. And let's not even get started about alien scum because the, you know, empire was very anti-alien. And so if you underreport your census numbers, you also don't have to allocate resources to help out that population. Remember, there was still an imperial senate uh, and some semblance of rule and law. And I'm sure Coruscant was obligated to distribute a certain amount of aid and welfare for the population. And if you only have to budget for 3 trillion people instead of, you know, a quadrillion? Well, you're going to be saving a ton of money. And these are credits that the Emperor needed. The Republic had ended the war with tons of debt, debt that the Empire inherited. And now with this massive military industrial complex that the Empire needed to build its navy and army, Palpatine needed all the credits he could find for building those factories and war machines. Forget about running soup kitchens or field hospitals in the lower levels. If you don't exist on the census, you might as well be some mindless rackles running around in the dark. So this is why the census is important. It lets you know your people better and what their needs are. This is why the Empire was so stupid. They disregarded the needs of their people so much that eventually life became unbearable and trillions of people started becoming dissenters. We don't actually get to see the fall of Coruscant at the end of the original trilogy, but it probably was a pretty crazy planet to be on. The Empire would try to bring the Stormtrooper Corps onto the planet, but the truth was they never really stood a chance. Coruscant's true power is in the trillions upon trillions of people who live there. Like a tidal wave, they came from the depths and swept the Empire away.